So we are talking about the Black Scholes option pricing model for equity options. We will focus on how to implement this in Python and do some basic calculations. So the basic assumption of this model is that you have a stock price ST time T. And the stock price in the future at time T plus DT uh, is a random variable which has a log normal distribution given the stock price today at time T. So this means that if you if you look at this expression, so the logarithmic return, you take the stock price in the future divided by the stock price today, and you take the natural logarithm of this fraction, then this is has a normal distribution. And the normal distribution has an expectation given by this expression, so mu minus one half sigma squared times dt. And the variance is uh, sigma squared dt dt is the time interval and what are these other parameters so mu is the expected return and sigma is the so-called volatility of the stock price and why do we have to add minus one half sigma squared this is because when you take the exponential function to get the, get back the actual stock price then then it works out correctly so that uh, mu is actually the um, uh, expected return So we will look at the Python script to plot the graph of the density function, of the probability density function of this log normal distribution. So we, ha we are using this uh, module in Python called dognorm. Uh, it has a built-in function PDF, a PDF for probability density function. We are using some other modules, so matplotlib and numpy, to, to, to create a plot. Uh, but this uh, PDF function, we have to give it some parameters. So sigma is just this volatility parameter. And then we have to give it this scale parameter. So we recognize mu minus sigma squared divided by 2. This is the expression inside our normal distribution. But we are not trying to plot a normal distribution, but a log normal distribution. So the way this function is constructed, we have to give it the exponential of this expression as the, um, as a scale parameter. So let's run the code and see what happens. Okay, so we have a graph. This is a density of the log normal distribution. We see, okay, it's a little bit skewed to the right. Um, so even if we know that uh, the mean value is approximately 1.05, the top of the graph, the maximum um, uh, of the density function is actually a little bit lower. It's even a little bit lower than one. But we can, uh, we can illustrate um, this um, model in a different way. So, um, there's actually um, a, a distribution for the stock price at every time point. Uh, so if we look at the time interval from 0 to 1, so one year in the future, uh, for every time point in between, there's also a probability distribution for what the stock price will do in between. And we can do a, a simulation. So uh, we divide the time interval in 100 steps. And then for every time step, we, we do a random sampling. So we, we draw 30 random samples from the return distribution. So this log normal distribution. And um, and then, then we get in the end we get uh, an array with thirty different time series uh, that are somehow uh, different possible outcomes of, of what could um, what could happen from this from this stock price um, process. So uh, let's just uh, run it and see. We do a plot in the end. Here we see all these different outcomes. So the stock price starts at one, 
what could happen. It could go very high, it could go very low, or it could go somewhere in between. So let's talk about options. So we are looking at a European call option on the stock with expiry date one year into the future and a strike price of 1.1. This means that the holder of the option has the right, but not the obligation, to buy uh, the stock or buy 100 shares of the stock um, exactly one year into the future at the expiration date. And also uh, with a fixed price of $1.1 per share. So um, we remember that the share price today was $1 per share. And uh, you then have a right to buy the stock uh, for 10% more uh, one year into the future. So um, this implies that uh, there is a possibility to, to profit from this option. Because if now, if the stock price has increased, uh, so one year from now it's higher than 1.1, uh, then if you have the right to buy the stock at 1.1, then you could immediately sell it again for a higher price and pocket the difference. And the payoff from this option would then be given by this, um, this function. So um, 100 shares times the difference between the price in the future that you could sell it for and the strike price that you had to pay. And if this, uh, if the, the future price of the stock is has uh, not increased so much, so it's still below 1.1, then this this is negative. But um, we don't have a negative payoff because uh, we don't have to buy the stock. It's an option. We can choose not to exercise it. So then nothing will happen. So then it will be zero. So from this function, you get uh, zero if this is negative. So let's just also plot this um, payoff function in Python. We are defining a function in Python, which is just exactly this, uh, this function. And uh, here it looks like uh, a hockey stick. Uh, so on the right, if, we, if the stock increases, the stock price increases, then, then we will have a payoff. We will make money, but, but if it goes down, then we won't lose anything. So it should now be clear that this option has uh, some value. So it gives the holders the possibility to make a profit in some outcomes of the world. But there is no possibility to lose anything from the option. So we should not be expect to be able to get this for free. So you, it should have a price. You should have to pay something for the option. And the, and the price um, that you should expect to pay uh, can be theoretically estimated. And according to the theory, the price of the option at the beginning of the period should be equal to the uh, expected present value of the future uncertain payoff and uh, the expectation has to be taken according to the risk neutral probability distribution we will do this by uh, random sampling so we will take 10,000 random samples from the risk neutral probability distribution how do we do this we have to assume that the expected return is equal to the risk-free interest rate. So in our example, this is 1.5%. And this uh, has nothing to do with the real world. It's just a mathematical construction that if you use the risk-free interest rate as the expected return, then, then you get a probability distribution, which can be used to compute the option price. So the risk-free interest rate is, is uh, the same interest rate that we use 
to compute this discount factor, which gives us the present value of the of the cash flow in the end. So let's first just let's do this random sampling and look at the histogram of the samples. So we see it looks like a log normal distribution, but it's a little bit more to the left than the previous one, because now the expected return is, is 1.5% instead of 5. So what uh, is the estimate for the auction price? So it's 4.55. So this means that um, we have to pay 4.55 dollars uh, for this option on 100 shares. And now if we look at this payoff uh, diagram, so we see that there's a big uh, possibility to profit uh, or to get a big return on this $4.55. So if you invest $4.55 to buy an option, after one year, if the stock price has increased by 25%, then you will get a payoff of $15. So this is uh, more than three times the initial investment. Uh, however, there's of, of course also the, the very real possibility that you just lose everything because if the stock price goes down or it only increases 5%, then you, then you lost the payment, the premium for the option, but you didn't uh, make anything back. So there is also a different way to do this. Um, there's something called the black shells formula. This is an exact formula that just gives the option price directly. So it um, depends on these different parameters. So sigma and um, R, so the risk free interest rate, the volatility, the time to expiry, the strike price and the initial stock price. Um, and the interesting thing is that you don't see mu anywhere. The expected return does not appear in the formula. We also didn't use this in the previous calculation. So it's, uh, it's an interesting phenomenon that you don't have to have an opinion about the future expected return of the stock in order to compute the price of the option. Um, now we will just uh, put this function into Python. You, you have to just compute this D1 and D2 expressions, and then you plug those into the distribution function of the normal distribution, and then you get this very simple expression for the option price. So let's just look at that. So here we are just defining these two D1 and D2 functions, and then we are calling them from our main function that gives us the exact uh, price for the option. So let's run this and see what we get. So now we have 4.775. This is not uh, exactly the same as we got from our random sampling. So why is it different? So it could be that, uh, I mean, the random sampling from to compute an expectation, this should get more precise if we have a larger sample size. We use 10,000 samples. Maybe we should try 100 times uh, that, so 1 million samples. Let's just run this again. You see the histogram is a little bit smoother now. Looks more like the log normal distribution. And also the result from the option pricing is closer to the result from the formula. So 4.78. Let's try even more samples, so 10 million. Okay, now we get even closer. So 77459 compared to 4.775. 